In this screen, you have some general information about your extension. You will see your name and extension number, your current date and time. In addition, you will see some additional software-based functionalities at the bottom of the screen. On the right side, you have three buttons that will be used when presenting incoming calls to you or will be used when making outbound calls. On the left side, these two arrows will help us to navigate through options in the screen. In addition, you'll have a dedicated button to raise or lower the volume, dedicated buttons for headset functionalities, mute and a speakerphone, your main keypad for when dialing a main number, and some additional dedicated buttons for voicemail, transferring calls, accessing options in the telephone, conferencing, accessing the directory, intercom, redial or history, and put a call on hold. Placing calls. Obviously, making phone calls using this device is the same as any other device that you probably use in the past. The important thing is, when making calls using your phone lines, you have to remember to add the prefix 9. Meaning, if I'm dialing for an extension, to, for another extension in my um, organization, I just need to press that extension directly and that will dial that number. For example, if I'm calling extension 350, I can just pick up my handset, dial 350, and I'm done. If I'm making an outbound call using my lines, I just need to press 9 and the phone number that I'm dialing. Be aware that you can also dial that extension number without picking up your handset and after a couple of seconds that call will go on a speakerphone and that is another way to make a phone call using your speakerphone. Once you are in a phone call, you will see some additional information in the screen. You will see the person that you're talking to, the extension or number of that person, as well as how long that call has been active. Answering calls. When an incoming call is presented to you, you will see a red LED blinking on the top corner of the phone. You will also see one of the lines blinking in green, with also the information of the person that is calling you. After that, you can just pick up that call. You will see additional information at the bottom of your screen with some software-based functions. For example, once you are in an active call, you can use functions like park, move, or you can just simply hang up. The phone system allows you to execute an action in multiple ways. You can pick up this call just pressing the button blinking, the answer soft-based button, or even the speakerphone. Let's go over some of the button dedicated functionalities, starting with transfer. In the MyTel Connect solution, you have two concepts related to transfer or conferencing. The first one, blind. The first one, blind. A blind transfer is a transfer method that you will use when transferring a call to another person without letting them know who's the caller. For example, If I take this call and I want to do a blind transfer, I will press transfer, the extension of my destination, and transfer. That call went directly to the destination extension 340 on my side without me telling that person of the caller. The other option for doing transfer is to do it as a consultative transfer. A consultative transfer will allow me to announce the name of the person to the destination, 
And then after that, complete that transfer if the person is available for that call. I can execute a consultative transfer doing this. I can pick up the call, let's transfer, the destination extension and press consult. When my destination pick up the call, I can mention the name of the person that is calling and if he's or she is okay to receive that call, I can just press yes to complete that transfer or I can press cancel and the call will be returned to me. In this case, if I want to complete the transfer, I can press yes and that call then will be transferred to the final destination. In conferencing, we have the same two concepts. We have a blind conferencing or a consultative conferencing. And the options will be presented exactly in the same way. A blind conferencing will allow me to bring a third party into my call without me letting him know that I have another person in the line. However, an option of consultative conference is also available, allowing me to disclaim to the person that I'm included in the call, that I have someone already in a phone call and that I would like him or her to join us. How can you execute this? Let's see. First, let's pick up this call. If I want to have a blind conferencing, I will press conference, the extension of the person that I want to bring in, and press conference. Once that person pick up the call, the system will take those two calls, merge them in one conference call. As you can see, if I press the button, percentage show, it will show me the two people that I have on this particular conference call. If I want to do a consultative conference, the options are pretty much the same. I will pick up this first call. I will do conference. The extension of the person that I want to bring in but I will press consult. That will initiate a call with my third person. I can let him know that I have already a person in a phone call and that I will like to bring him also in. And if that person agrees and is available, I can just press yes and that will merge the call and we will have a conference call with the three of us or if the person is saying, no, I'm not available, I can just press cancel. And in this case, I will go back to my original caller. In this case, I'm going to test the cancel and I'm going back to my original caller. So my destination seems that was just declining to join us in this call. Again, if I want to conference 340, I will press conference. I will do consult, that person will pick up. But if in this case, he said, yes, I can join your call, you will press yes. And the system will merge both calls and you will have now a conference call with your two different people. Putting call on hold. Putting calls on hold is relatively simple. It is common to have in this phone system multiple ways to execute the same action. So for example, when having a call from Mary Davis, again, I can start my speakerphone and answer that call pressing my blinking green LED or button, or I can just press my speaker. And if I want to put that call on hold, I can just press that green button and that will change from green to orange or red blinking. That means that that particular call for Mary Davis is currently on hold. You will get an alert at the 10 seconds for every minute, the first 10 seconds, just as a reminder that you have one call on hold. 
To take that call from the on hold mode, you can just bring the send, push the send, the send button and that will bring the call back to active. Of course, you can also use the hold button or function at the bottom of your um, keys and will execute exactly the same action. You can also on hold when pressing the hold button and that will bring that call back to active. If you are having an active call and all of, all of a sudden receive another call, you will see that your steady green will be showing you your active call, but then another line will start presenting or blinking with the name of the new caller. When answering that second call, the system will automatically put your previous call on hold. Remember, green steady means that that call is active Orange blinking means that that call is on hold. To navigate between them, I can just press the button of the person that I want to talk to. So if now I want to talk to Mary Davis that is currently in the first line, I can just go there, press that, and that will take and put Mary Davis as an active call, and the system will automatically put Robert Smith in my second line on hold. And I can be just switching over depending on the person that I want to talk. If I want to put both calls on hold, I can just press rubber smith in this case again, and that will put both in blinking LEDs and blinking red LEDs. And that means that both calls are currently on hold. And again, I can just go and press the one that I need or I want to talk to. Call history. Call history. To access your call history, you need to press the redial button. When pressing the redial button, you will have access to your call history showing you if this was an incoming or outgoing call, the extension or the full number of the person that you were trying to reach or that they tried to reach you, as well as the time and date for when that call happened. I can navigate through the history using these two key buttons going up and down through my call history. If I want to dial a specific person, I can just select the right person that I want to dial. And once I have it ready, I can just press the dial key to initiate that call. Accessing the directory. To access the directory, I can use the directory button. When pressing there, you will see a list of all the contacts that are part of your organization and I can navigate using my up and down keys next to my screen. If I need to look for a specific person, I can also use my keypad and I start punching the numbers containing the initials of the person that I'm trying to call. For example, if I need to call Robert, I can just press seven, that contains the R, six, that holds the O, and I'm going to have a possible match for all the contacts that have those specific letters as part of the first name or last name. In this case, if I want to call Robert Smith, I can just go down, select Robert Smith, and dial from there to initiate that call. Parking calls. Sometimes organizations have the need to park calls in different extensions. How can I do that in this particular system? Let's imagine that I'm receiving a call from Mary Davis. When picking up the call, my soft base options are going to show me a feature of park. If I want to park this call in another person extension, let's say for example Robert Smith, I just need to press park, the extension of Robert Smith in this case is 340, and then park. So I press park 340 and park 
and that will transfer that call and park it in Robert extension. That means that at Robert desk, he will have that call on hold. If someone park a phone call on my extension, this is how it's going to look. You will see all of a sudden a call comes in in on hold mode from Mary Davis. That means that someone parked Mary's call on my phone. So when I get on my desk, I can just press that button and I can start talking to Mary. Voicemail. Setting up the voicemail and accessing voicemails through the phone is just about following steps or following the instructions of the prompt. The first time that you press the voicemail button, you will need to enter your credentials. Your credentials by default are set up as one, two, three, four. And after that, the system may ask you to change those credentials and they will also and, and the system will also provide you information about how to set it up properly, meaning your voicemail. So to access your voicemail, press the voicemail button. Please enter your password followed by pound. In this case. Welcome to your new mailbox. You will now be asked to record your name. Please record your name at the tone. When finished, press pound. John. If your recording is correct, press pound. To review, press 1. To re-record, press... John. If your recording is correct, press pound. To review, name recorded. You have no unheard messages. Main menu. To listen to your messages, press 1. To send a message, press 2. To listen to your saved... You can record and change your greeting using the additional options on the voicemail um, setup. Please enter your password followed by pound. You have no unheard messages. Main menu. To listen to your messages, press 1. To send a message, press 2. To listen to your saved messages, press 3. To change mailbox option, press 7. To log off, mailbox options. To record a personal greeting, press 1. To configure your please record your greeting at the tone. When finished, press pound. Thank you for calling me. Please leave your message and I will call you back as soon as possible. If your recording is correct, press pound. To review, press 1. To re-record, press... Thank you for calling me. Please leave your message and I will call you back as soon as possible. If your recording is correct, press pound. To review, greeting enabled. Mailbox options. To record a personal greeting. And that is how you can just record your personal greeting for your voicemail. The last feature we will review in this training for your phone is the state button. This is a soft bait functionality available on the right side of your screen and will allow you to change your phone from available to out of the office. The most important difference between this status is that you can handle specific preference for call flow based on your status. For example, in available, I can have my phone ringing three or four times and after that going to voicemail. But if I go to state and select out of the office and OK, that will set up call handling mode as out of the office and my preference for handling calls at that moment may be different. Meaning that if I'm out of the office, instead of ringing my phone, calls may go directly to voicemail right away. One of the things that I have to remember if using this out of the office option is that the following day when I'm back, I have to remember to go to state and go back to my options and put my phone as available to make sure that I receive calls again.